raspberry and walnut butter cookies. I'm in the kitchen baking, and this time I am with my grandson Lorenzo. Benvenuto Lorenzo. So we are going to do some baking, Lorenzo, today. We're going to make delicious butter cookies with raspberry jam and walnuts. I'm ready. Sounds All exciting. All right, I bet. All right, so maybe the sugar first, Lorenzo. Just pour it right in here. Okay. The butter is next, yep. right? We're gonna cream them, right? Yeah, cream the butter and the sugar together. Okay, so that's... And what's important is that, you know, every step that you get the sugar really kind of creamed with the butter so that you got a homogenized kind of uh, mixture. And what I'm looking here is that it's sticking a little bit to the sides, so I think we better stop a little bit and scrape it down. Much Go faster ahead. than my uh, handheld electric mixer, for sure. Yeah? Oh, so are you telling me that Grandma, maybe for Christmas, should get you <laughs> one of these? No, uh, if you want. All right, good. Okay. Yeah, get it all off your... Your fingers off the spatula, <laughs> off of everything. Let's get in there. And you tell me when you think it is creamy enough. I'm gonna defer to you the decision. Really? On on this big event here. Yeah? I think it's airy enough. Maybe getting close? Just about. Maybe okay. like 30 more. Continue. What goes in next? Uh next we have these two. Okay. Should I? Yeah, why sure. Not? Why not? Vanilla and the And egg. an egg. Yes, okay. vanilla extract and an egg. Okay, I'm going to just lower it a little bit so it doesn't splatter all over. Helpful. Let, let that sort of get homogenized. Mm -hmm. And then, what do we have here? We have flour, salt. I would put the salt right in the flour. Don't you think so? And you know, it's always difficult right, to put from a bowl like that into a mixer, you kind of always miss the spot. So a good tip, Lorenzo, is parchment paper. Mm -hmm. Put it on the parchment paper right in yeah. the center. Go ahead. You know, I didn't think about using it for uh, dry ingredients. I usually just use it for a zest, but that's a helpful you know, yeah. tip. So we got this. So slowly, we pick it up slowly and I'm gonna slow this down, and you can kind of slowly get let it fall in. That's it. Do we get everything in? Just about. I think that it's there. Don't you think so? So. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Okay. So here we are. You see? So here we are with the paddle. Collect it all. So, Lorenzo, you got it all together? We'll put it into a plastic wrap here. Put it right in the middle. I need two goes, but here we go. Okay. All right. So, you collected everything. Pretty let's, much. Let's get everything off here. Anyway. Okay. And let's pull it all together. And because the butter is so soft, we will chill it in the refrigerator, and then we will roll it into into cookies. For how long? I think one hour will do, but you can leave it overnight. Awesome. Okay. Cookies, like pasta, have a basic recipe. But then to that, you can add all kinds of goodies. You can add cherries in the mix, or you can add nuts. If you go south of Italy, almonds. If you go north of Italy, Piemonte, it's hazelnuts. So the basic butternut cookie mix takes on different vestiges as it travels through the regions of Italy. And then, of course, it came to America. We've been rolling these cookies out, shaping them. We're almost finished. And then we can bake them and put the jam on it. So go ahead, Lorenzo, let's, we go. let's finish this. Just like this, look, just like this. And press it in, ah, that's good. And press it in the middle, go ahead. You know, because they will puff up anyway. And I will fit this one someplace here, and here we are. When you put them in the oven, 350 degrees, about 20 minutes, they will puff up. We'll pull them out. We'll kind of make the little indentation and put the jam and the walnuts, and we'll put them back in the oven to finish. Right across 
The house where we lived in Astoria, 30th Street and Broadway, Caddy Corner was the Walkins Bakery. Yes, that was Christopher Walkins' family. It was a German bakery, and Mr. Walken hired me, and he hired me because I wanted to, to work on weekends, so there's no school. So it was a real European-flavored bakery. It kind of made me feel at home. Sometimes on a weekend when all the bakers were gone, I would end up in the back actually finishing off cakes if there was a birthday or something. So I really enjoyed it, and I stayed there for, for quite a few years part-time. My mother then took on my job, and I made friends with the Walken family, and we're still friends, Christopher Walken and I. The cookies have been in the oven for eight minutes, and we're just gonna make kind of a little indentation like that. Give me enough space where I can put the jam. So you make the indentation. Gotcha. And I will put then a little bit of jam. Why don't you start this way so we go like an assembly line? Go ahead, press. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, that's, not a, that's nice. So a little bit of jam, just like that. Not too much because, you know, they will overflow. A little bit of jam, jam. Oh, what a nice needle you're making. You know, <laughs> you know what a needle? Nest. There was a, an Italian cartoon show I used to watch as a kid. Uh -huh. Like uh, Heidi, I don't know if you know it. If you remember. Heidi, I loved Heidi. It was my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was a line in the theme song that goes, Il tuo nido. Il tuo nido nei monti. Non, non craccare. Don't crack the cookies. Just make it nice and gentle. So because otherwise, that's it. Just like that. And that's a nice needle. Just like that. And a little one here. So now let's put a little bit of uh, nuts on top, the walnuts, the chopped walnuts, as much as you like. And then we can put them back in the oven. And for another eight minutes, and they will be finished. It's all ready for us to enjoy. I'm excited. Yeah, you should be. Every region in Italy has its own cuisine and, of course, its own desserts. And so desserts traveled with the immigrants into the New World and really took hold, and Americans love their desserts. So whether you talk about tiramisu, panna cotta, cannoli, all of these are very popular in America. So the cookies have baked, they have cooled. We are ready to plate them. Let's get started. Here we go. All right. And we're going all around with this. Mm -hmm. So would you go around or would you pile up a little bit? Maybe go around a little bit, right? Like that. It's nice. I think that looks very nice. But before we offer it to anybody, I think you and I should taste one. We need to try it, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Let's see the job that we did. Which one? Well, we'll take the two in the middle. Okay, we take the two in the middle. That's good. Let's taste. Mmm. Wow. One of my favorite cookies, simple butter cookies. You taste the butter, it crumbles, and then the simplicity of the jam, the walnuts, Lorenzo, what do you think of it? I think they're delicious. So I like how it's like crunchy on the bottom and softer on the top. I think that's a nice contrast. And a nice cup of tea would go wonderful with this. But before we do that, we have to invite them. We certainly have enough. It's true. And we invite people to our house with tutti a tavola a mangiare. So come and join us. Mm. Italian dessert repertoire is one of the largest. And of course, desserts is one thing that one brings to celebrate the holidays, especially if you're an immigrant, if you're in a new country. What brings your native country to you, to your table, is the food, and dessert always do the trick. Whether it's the biscotti, whether it's the zaletti, whether it's the cannoli, the cream puffs, the amaretto cookies, whether it's the pignoli cookies, whether it's the ricotta cookies. All of these are uh, very traditional in Italy still and have remained here. And so at the end, it's very Italian. 